Okay, um, I think the mic is recording. If that's good, we'll get started. Um, since there's no one here, we will be able to cover a lot more, I assume. Um, today we were supposed to make a, a knob for a potentiometer, but I'm going to keep this simple. We'll just start off real quick with the knob for the potentiometer. So first we go sketch. All right, choose your plane. Um, usually I like to go on the left plane here, so this is fine. Now this, none of this is going to be to scale. I'm just going to do this roughly so we can get an actual shape out of here by the end of today. All right, let me just change that view properly. Yep, okay. Let me close that. So, potential, potentiometer knob. Actually, I'll just show you guys if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. We'll be making something one of these, something of this today, All right? Main thing I want to show is there's a small taper here. We'll skip that today because the taper does get a bit annoying to cut in here. But we'll just be doing these little um, grips here, and we'll also be doing the internal grip, just like that, right? We'll be doing that as well. Okay. So first, we'll just draw the rough side profile of that. Looks something like. Probably looks something like this, right? Okay, once we're done with that, we'll end the sketch. Now, we've got that. The quickest tool in Fusion is to use this thing called Revolve. It's in Create. You click Revolve. You select your face. Then you select your axis, which is this right here. And you make sure it's 360 degrees. And then you have your knob, right? That's a very crude shape. Now, next, what we want to do is we want to extrude the hole for um, the potentiometer. So we start with another sketch again. We'll do a circle this time, set a diameter, click on that face, right? Anything in Fusion that is a circle is the center point, pretty much. Uh, we'll assume that's rough. We'll just make a quick rough estimate. I'm not, nothing's going to be measured today. Um, that's roughly the diameter of the knob inside, we do that, once that's done we select that face, we hit E for extrude, um, depending on how big or how long that shaft of the potentiometer is, you can have that either way, I can have it closer in, I can extrude all the way out even, but no we'll just leave that, we'll just do something like this for now, we'll assume it's a really short potentiometer shaft. Okay, now we have the rough shape, it looks like a cone. All right. Next thing, what we want to do is actually, since we've already gone through this step, next thing what we'll do is we'll draw a line that connects from this center point down to. Let's just see. It's gonna be hard to find that center point, but okay, that looks pretty straight to me. Not oh, mess that up actually. That should do it. Oh, that's weird. Oh yeah, sorry. End that sketch first. Okay, we'll select the line. So we select it from where we are. Here we go. There we go. It is kind of hard to tell when you're drawing at an angle. You don't know what plane it is. See, exactly my point. It's kind of hard to see. Mm. Actually, we'll skip that for now. So we've already done this step of it. Now, next step, what we'll be doing is we'll be drawing on that to make the knurling on the inside. So now we want to make the grip so the potentiometer actually stays in there. 
Actually, you know what? I skipped one step by accident. So, I'll undo that. We'll undo the extrusion here. So, first, hit L. We'll do that. Alright, we have that right there. Now once that's done, we select this triangle, which will be the grip for that. And you can go and create. There's a pattern here. You can do a circular pattern. Alright, so we select that. Oh, sorry. Sketch. We'll just go sketch. So we select circular pattern. We select the object, which is this. All right? Now your center point is the one where you drew out. And the quantity of how many you want is up to you. We'll just do roughly 15. Or actually that's not enough, 20. There we go. There's 20 on here. Hit OK. Now, now we have that profile drawn out. You hit extrude again. You can extrude that back inside. All right now we have something to grip onto the That grips onto the shaft of the potentiometer. All right. Okay, now we'll go on to the external grip of this. This is a bit harder to do, but we'll also try to. Let's see if I can pull it off again. So we'll just place the point on this. So point. I want to place the point on there. Right. Next, what I'll do is I'll stop the sketch. Now we'll place another point on here, roughly about there. Now, next thing we have to do is joining those two points up. Right. So we'll end that sketch again. Line, point, joining that point. Where is the other point gone? There we go. Oh, my bad. Right, let's just try a different way of doing this. Sweet. Alright, we'll just draw that triangle from there. Alright, we have that. Now we'll run the same thing again, we run circular pattern, objects, so that's our object, your center point is there, how many you want is, I don't know, we'll just do 20 again, actually we can make that probably a bit denser, 40, alright, Extrude. You can go down, you can go up. Now, obviously, you can see that 
it's I'm extruding on that goes straight down. Uh, in order to extrude on an angle, you don't use extrude. It's called sweep. Right. So you select your face, and now in this case we would I would probably join, like I said before, we would join that point to that point. I haven't been able to do that because fusion's been acting a bit weird, but. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can join that these lines. Okay, so that gets joined. Yeah, you see, like Fusion likes to work only in one plane most times. So if we wanted to do it this way, there's another way of doing that. So we got to this far, this step this far. Um, I'm actually gonna redo the whole thing again. There's a different way of doing this. So select the whole thing again and just clear it out. There's multiple, like Fusion, there's multiple ways of doing anything in here, right? So this is a tapered one. If we wanted to go, yeah, we'll just delete the whole thing, right? If we wanted to do it this way, we could as well. So we'll just do a circle. It's probably a different way of doing it. So we we'll go from top view. So you, if you're measuring the circle, like the potentiometer, you probably know that this is, you'll have a size. Let's just make it roughly about that size, right? Next thing you do, you draw another circle in the center. You probably roughly know that size as well. Extrude that up. Next thing we'll do, we'll extrude up. Oh, I don't want to extrude that one that far. So extrude that and extrude that. Oh, come on. I flipped it. All right. Extrude. Hit enter. All right. Now circle again. Draw it on that plane. We'll extrude this again. Okay. Now, let's just say that's eight. Oh, come on, where'd you go? Extrude. Extrude. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, let's try that again. All right. Okay, here we go. Fix that. All right. Um, we'll do what's called a chamfer on that edge. So go into. You can do a fillet. You can do a chamfer. It doesn't matter. Up to you. So that's what fillet will do. Gives you a nice curve. Um, we'll do that for now. Now for the chamfer, we'll just do something similar. Okay. So what I'll do on this is I'll draw on this plane. Let's see, one here, just make another triangle like before, alright, now you can also fill it in 2D as well. Alright, we just delete that straight line there. Now we can do a fillet in 2D. So that and that, you'll fillet that, right? If you want any smooth edges, you can run that along. Now that's done. Just like that. We do the circular pattern again. Oops, gotta exit out of the sketch. So we just type circular pattern. Oh, why won't you? Okay, we'll try create. Pattern, circular pattern, right? Oh, come on. 
All right, actually, in this case, we can probably extrude that down already. So, all right, extrude. Push that all the way down. Well, actually, I just want to change that up a bit. I'll make it a bit deeper so we can actually get proper finger grooves. All right, there we go. And just fix that up. There we go. All right. Fill it. Maybe not that much. Just that. Okay. Extrude. Go negative twenty. Yep, that's roughly there. We'll go twenty. Negative twenty-two. There we go. All right. Now, what we can do now is we can repeat this. Okay. So, oh, no, create circular pattern, right? We selected that. It's take a while to load. Come on. Huh? No, it hasn't. It hasn't popped up. Oh, that's rectangular. Yep, my bad. All right, let's try that again. Pattern, circular pattern. Oh, here we go. Let's see that. So faces. One, two, three. Axis. Just select the green. All right, the quantity we'll just say ten. Okay, there we go. Now that looks like a gear closer than it is. It looks more like a gear than the knob. But we'll just run something in here. We'll just do a oh my bad. We'll just do a chamfer or draft up to you. You can do a chamfer here. So you select your edges. One, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, ten. Okay, oh that's the wrong one. I've deselected that. Now you have multiple options in chamfer. There's equal distance, there's two distances, and there's distance at an angle. I'll just be doing distance at an angle. So you can choose how much we want in there. So maybe around that. But the angle, we can make it a bit steeper. Oh, all the way around, my bad. All right, you can have that at one degree if you wanted to, which doesn't show up anymore. But yeah, you can crank that like. Let's try 85. Oh, I've gone over the maximum. All right, there we go. Now you can change that angle as well. You can change the length, but if you. Ah, okay, here we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it like that. Right, it's pretty simple. We made some sort of potentiometer knob. Um, I've already gone through that step. If we want to do it again, we can just make that hole in the center again. Um, let's just do that as well. Put that there. Extrude. Doesn't really matter too much. There we go. Um, if you're 3D printing this, which you most likely will be, um, the tolerances do matter a bit, but if we're putting that onto a potentiometer, it probably doesn't matter too much because the metal is harder than the plastic and you can just probably press fit it in. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it is only 6.35 today. This was supposed to run till 8. There was supposed to be a lot more people, but since there's only three of you today, um, if there's anything any of you guys want me to make, or show you how to make, feel free to.
probably leave that all on the screen. Now I'll just go, maybe I'll go through some other functions. Um, if you guys need to do threads, maybe threads would be a nice one to go over. All right. Let's just go over threads. Okay. Um, I'm just going to make a, let's say, a bolt. So we go circle, set the diameter, top down view, top. All right. Let's say we make an M6 bolt. So, six. All right. Now, extrude, select that. Whoop. Let's make that 30. Okay. Let's give it a base. So let's say this is a M6 socket bolt, or hex bolt, technically speaking. We'll do polygon, circumscribe, inscribe, no, we'll just do circumscribe. Select that. Alright, a M6 bolt, that is, yeah, let's just make it on an 8mm socket. Extrude. Alright, hit enter. There's your rough shape of a bolt. Okay, we'll do threads. Threads. I can't remember what threads is. I think create coil thread. Thread, here we go. So this thread. Now you can select your face. That's your face for the thread. Um, isometric profile. So, yep. You can have all these threads you can go through. We'll stick to isometric profile. Yep, that's good. Your size is 6 mil. It already detected the diameter, so that's good. Designs M6 by 1. There's all your types of pitches M6 by 0 0.8, whatever there is. Just go M6 by 1 since it's standard. We can also make that, yep. Leave it at M6. Actually, let's make it M4 or M5. Make it M5. Yeah, you can pretty much go through this, right? M6, we had that M6 by M1. Modeled. You can have that. So it's like rendering it pretty much. Um, we don't want the full length. So, yeah, that's not bad. That's good. Once you're done, you can select your right hand. Most threads are right hand. 6G. Well, it doesn't matter too much. Alright, that's good. Now, you probably notice that this thread is not... like. You'll probably notice on most bolts, the top of the thread is chamfered. So you can actually get bolts on easily. This one's not. Well, I want to say it's not, but it's chamfered only on this side. So we can fix that. All right, that's done. We'll just run a quick chamfer on it. We'll just do equal distance this time. Give it the slightest chamfer you need. Now it, it does get a bit deformed because you're trying to chamfer around a coil. Well, and fusion just crashed. So you can see it does get a bit weird when you try to chamfer that. We'll just leave it like that for now. Alright, I'm probably pushing Fusion a bit too far. Okay, that that's a bit messed up, but alright. Yeah, so you have your bolt. Now, same thing is, applies for a screw. You just, I mean, same thing applies for a nut. You just reverse the th what you made and just hollow it out and make the thread yourself. So, since I've already done this, we can actually make a thread on this. So, we'll turn the back of this into a four mil right push 
this would never actually happen in real life. This is, this stuff doesn't exist. Extrude, just like that. Start. Uh, yep, that's fine. Now you have that. We'll try the thread tool again. Create thread. Four mil. That's fine. Full length. Why not full length? There we go. All right. Is your internal thread? There you go. Um, last last week I went over some other stuff you guys might have missed. Um, we'll go into the model. We went over animation, render, simulation. We'll just go into render, make this look a bit more realistic. Right? That eh, looks not too bad right now. Setup, appearance, use render tool, apply to bodies, faces. We'll just apply it to the whole body. In this design, you can choose from a library, so we'll just go stainless. Stainless. Okay, so Fusion doesn't have it in this library. Hmm, okay, never mind. Fusion doesn't have this in its library. I think. Okay, we'll save that design first. 3D thread. Render. Okay. Yeah. Takes about, takes a bit. Uh, we'll go to drawing from design. Let's try that. All right, so if you want this, if you want your bolt, if it's something custom, you want someone to make it, this is what you would give it to, give to the manufacturer. Alright, here we go. Um, let's see. So we can do this. Base view. Here you go. You got your, you got yours there. Um, we'll scale that up to 4 to 1. Makes it a bit easier to see. Oh, the thread won't render. Yep, so yeah. Fusion does a pretty good job of showing you the threads. Right? Shows you there. It shows you the inner thread as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you can do how to do. Um, radius. So I think if you try to put thread dimensions in here, you have to do that manually. We'll ignore that. Next thing you want to do is maybe we'll chuck a projected view, base view again. Now we'll chuck that in there, but you can choose front, top. We'll just try top. It gives you the top view of it. right? Probably not too useful, but you can see it. Make that five, 4 to 1. Right, doesn't really help much, because that's all you're seeing. You can do a cut way view, so let's try that cut view. Select parent view, starts here, cuts right through the center, ends there. Okay, there we go. Right, so that shows you a cut thread on the side. Exactly a screw sliced in half. Right, that's pretty good. That, I guess that helps you to see the thread a bit better. Should do that as well. Yep. Let's see if we can get back into the render section. All right. So we, let's go back in render. Okay, render settings. Now, um, when you render in Infusion, it does take a, quite a bit of um, your your CPU. It actually doesn't render with the graphics card, which is weird. Render quality. We'll do a local render. Cloud render means you're running obviously on this on the net. Um, local render. We'll do that on here. That's fine. Render. Takes a while. It's probably still taking a while, but um, once it's done, it will show a thumbnail. Yep, yep. That's it for the bolt. I'm gonna probably stop here since there's other things you guys might want to make. Yep, 
So the render should show up a bit later. But yeah, I'm gonna stop here. Um, if there's anything anyone wants to make, you can ask me. I'll be The weird taper thing I was trying to do. Let's see if we can get that working again. Delete all that. Delete that as well. All right. Sketch. Here we go. Let's try, let me try that again. Try that again. All right, let me see if I can get that working again. There we draw a line from that up, draw a line. Alright, that's good. Now stop that sketch, try it here again. Okay, so yeah, see, the problem I had before, we fixed it now, we just drew a, right, now we'll just try to draw another line connecting them, just make sure you select the right plane, so this is the right plane now, that, why won't you join, there we go, okay, stop sketch, now we've got a path to follow, so, that's gone, right, 
this time. We'll draw that again. Line, line. Hey, are you here for the fusion? Oh, um, check with someone in the workshop. I can't help you right now. Okay. Yeah, but um, because yeah, this email. Did you did you like put oh. money in it or something? Yeah. And it's you put something. Huh? I it did he give you anything? Just email. Uh, send create an email. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we fixed that problem before. Now we'll do that extrude, we'll do the sweep this time. So, sweep. You selected that profile, we got two, that's good. And that profile's disappeared. Okay. That's not good. Alright, let's try that again. Okay, that should be it. Some sketch. Sweet. Here we go, that's selected. Next we have to select our path, which is there. There we go. Oh, kidding me. That did not come out as I expected, but like you guys probably can see from there. Don't worry, we'll just chamfer the whole thing. We'll just offset the whole thing. Well, I can't offset the face though. We'll chamfer that before we do anything else. Okay, so 73 is the max we can push it. Alright, I might have messed up there again. But All right, I was trying to do this last night as well, and it is very finicky to get that the, the path sweep properly. Like you have to, I think you might have to sweep it further out. Let's just see if I can extrude that curved surface. Yeah, so that didn't work out too well. It might be because when you're eyeballing it, it is a bit off. It doesn't look that straight, but like that's sort of what we got. Um, I'll, I can still do the circular pattern on this. Selected axis is that little green dot is the axis that shows up. Okay, so turns out we don't have an axis in there.
Nope, no straw. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I fixed it. So I think I just defined an axis because there's a point there already. So yep, something weird kind of happened because I think I misdefined the axis. But if you did that properly, you would get the whole ring of the thing, the parts that I extruded out. Yep. Uh, I think I'm gonna stop the recording from here.